All right, let's get it. Guided Phonics and Beyond small group unit started in 20 minutes or less of prep time. In order to do this, you're going to use the quick lesson guides. When you open up your Guided Phonics and Beyond bundle, you'll see your content just like this. We're gonna go into the individual unit folders to find these quick lesson guides. We're going to do a sample with unit two. And right up here at the top, you can see it says new Guided Phonics Quick Lesson Guides. Open in there. And you're going to open the PDF. You would only use the editable version if for whatever reason you wanted to edit your plan. So we're going to open this up. And every single thing we're going to prep from the unit is going to be within this one PDF. Now, there's a little catch, and that's how you want to decide to prep your decodables. So we'll talk about that in a little bit later. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my thumbnails and I'm gonna go ahead and print my lesson plans. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab those. I'm gonna go ahead and print that front matter. So I'm gonna have the lesson plans and the cover and I'm gonna go ahead and click print. Now I have just standard paper in my printer right now because I don't want this on cardstock. So I'm gonna click print. And you can do this single-sided or double-sided. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine single-sided, but again, you could cut down paper by doing double-sided. So it's going to be 28 total pages. I'm going to click print. And again, I'm printing this on standard paper. You can see my lesson plan book is now printing. I have my cover page there, my front matter, and then the lessons are starting. Again, I did decide to print single-sided. You could print single-sided or double-sided. After this prints out, I'm gonna go ahead and get it bound. All right, I do have a binding machine, so I'm gonna go ahead and bind my lesson plan book. I have a true bind, so I do have a thicker back cover, a clear front cover, and then again, my lesson plans printed out, and I did decide to print them single-sided. So if you're not familiar with the true bind, you're just going to slide the uh, papers in, and it's going to punch those coveted holes that we need. So I'm gonna separate my lesson plans. I don't take the time to pre-count how many sheets I'm placing in there. I just try to grab a little stack and then go ahead and pull down the handle. I'm pretty weak, so I try to keep a small stack. And the True Brine definitely is one of those investment pieces because you're gonna use it over and over again but I do wish there was a more affordable way. So if you're familiar with one, please feel free to share with me and I'll share it out to the masses. Now the next step to print or to prep this, I'm gonna place my cover on the back and then my clear front is there. And then you're just gonna go ahead and start um, spiraling this up and it just starts right here down at the bottom. And then you'll just spiral up. And it's usually pretty quick once you get it going. Now there are automatic spirals, spiralers, but that usually takes your cost up in the binding machine and I just didn't feel it was worth it. I'm also not the best when it comes to a bunch of techie savvy stuff. And so manually spiraling it was just fine for me. Once it's completely spiraled, you do have to cut off or crimp the ends, and then it is good to go. And then after this gets up here, I am going to show you my lesson plan book spiraled with a different machine, just so you can kind of compare the two. Again, after you completely spiral it, you'll let it hang off a little bit on both ends, and then you'll just use your little tool to snip and crimp. And again, this is my lesson plan book that was um, bound on my Achilles one. So you can see it makes square holes and it uses a metal spiral where this one is a plastic spiral, a true spiral where this is kind of more of a coil. Um, so that's kind of the difference there. This one was also printed double-sided just so you can kind of see that difference. All right, we have our lesson plans printed and bound. Now we're ready to work into further into this PDF. We have our word chain mats, our map it mats, and our dictation mats. We also have our teacher lesson cards. So let's go ahead and work on those teacher lesson cards. And it's again, two, four, six, Two, four, six, seven pages. I should be able to count that quicker. Um, seven pages, so it's a really quick print. I do like to have these on cardstock, so I'm gonna go ahead and send them to my printer on cardstock. All right, you get to see me here. It's time we have our lesson cards printed out, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut those, and then we also have our lesson plan book. So let's get these cut, and then we'll move on to the next step.
All right, we have our lesson plans printed. We have our teacher resource cards printed. Now we need to work on the individual student materials for the small groups. So what I'm going to have us do is print the map it mat and the dictation mat front to back. Those will be used consistently throughout the unit. So I'm going to print those front to back. It's going to save on paper and also save on laminate because we are going to go ahead and laminate these front to back. And then the other option is the word chain board. Now, I like having a word chain mat. I feel like it gives the students kind of like a placement of where the letters go, where the word's gonna build. There's those reminders there with the arrow. So I do like having the word chain mat. So we're gonna go ahead and print that too. So first we're gonna print double-sided the map it mats and the dictation mats. We're gonna assume this is for a small group of six students. I'm gonna change this to six copies. I'm gonna click, this is already out clicks, but I'm gonna click print on, Flip, excuse me, print on both sides, and I'm gonna choose this flip on short edge. Go ahead and click print. And then I'm also going to print six word chain mats, and I'm gonna print those single-sided. And then we're gonna go ahead and laminate this material since it will be used by the students. You also will probably have your students writing on this mat, which is also why it will need lamination. All right, the next step is to laminate our mats. We have our map it mat on one side and our dictation mat on the other. We'll also laminate the word chain mats. Again, you'll probably want these laminated as the students are directly writing on top of them. All right, now we have our teacher lesson plans printed, our teacher resource cards. We also have the student materials in the map it mats, the dictation mats, and the word chain mats. The last component that needs prepped is the decodables. Now, there are decodable all-in-one sheets in this file. These are the simplest to print. They're black and white. They're in this file already. They're ready to go. However, a lot of teachers fear or kind of fear for their students that this just doesn't feel like a real book to them. So you do have many options when it comes to the decodables. We're going to go ahead and exit out of this file. And we're going to go back into that resource folder. So all the different Unit 2 decodable options are here. Now, again, when you're thinking about prepping for a unit, of course we want to in our heads prep all 25 lessons or all 25 books. However, if you break that down into smaller chunks, a week or two, that's maybe four books, three books. I would start really small. That way you get to practice with the books. You might choose one and you're like, ah, this doesn't really work for my students. I think I'm going to try this version of the decodables next. Try that one, see if you like it. So kind of start small. One of my favorites are the one page books. And those look like this. And what it does is it takes like basically all of the pages from the books and puts it on puts it on just one sheet of paper. So you see it really looks, each of these squares looks like a traditional page of a decodable, but it's all in one sheet of paper. And I have this in color and I have this in black and white. That's personally one of my favorites. Other teachers really like my mini books. These do require just a smidgen more of prep because they do need to be folded. You also have my books where you have two on one sheets. You just print these, cut down the middle. I have that in color and black and white. And then of course they have the traditional decodables too that are printed and folded. Those are in color and black and white as well. A lot of different options when it comes to the books. You even have these full size books, not that you would need this for the quick guides or you're trying to get things done in a hurry, but you have that as an option. Many, many options. Also, don't forget that you also have the virtual books. So if you have iPads or tablets for your students, you can even choose that as your decodable. So again, the last step is choosing which type of decodable you want to print and prep for your students. All right, it's time to look at the final product. So I just placed mine in a bag. You could, of course, put it in a book bin, whatever you choose to do, but just to kind of show you. So let's go back from the very beginning. Again, this is using the Quick Lesson Guides and Guide to Phonics and Beyond. These are designed for small group. We printed our single-sided, and then each of the lesson plans have the two days. So you have day one, day two. It's all here for you. The Quick Lesson Guides cover your phonemic awareness, your skill introduction, your orthographic mapping, your dictation and your word chains. And then of course it has the decodable component with the embedded comprehension questions right here for you. So this gives you 50 days. So this, what we prepped in 20 minutes, lasts you 50 days for this particular unit. Now, again, we next we printed out our lesson cards. And so I just have those binder clipped. Um, and then the next thing we did was prep our student mats. And again, we printed these front back. 
so you have your map it mat and your dictation mat when you see the video of me demoing this lesson that is what i've done as well so you'll see all we do is flip them front to back which makes that super manageable and then we also laminated the word chain mat and then this one you would if you choose you would have their magnetic letters up here or you could simply just use a dry erase marker if you're in a pinch you don't have enough magnets or you don't want to mess with getting the magnets out it's okay you can still do all of this with just a dry erase marker so let's say um we're saying um write the word net and they write n-e-t in each box and then we're like change net to pet what did you erase what did you add and yes the tactile movement of the magnetic letters is a great component but if you don't have that opportunity you can always use something like this with just a dry erase marker keep it very simple and very efficient um, and then the last thing would be the decodables. And remember, we went over many, many different types of decodables you could print from. I went with just the standard print to, printed decodable. Um, it's most similar to a true leveled book, or excuse me, a true book, a printed book. So they have all the pages there. They have the back cover. And then what I did was I reversed them every other, and then I binder clipped them. And I went ahead and got two decodables set up. Again, remember, I encourage you to maybe not print a whole unit of one particular decodable because you might even just switch decodables as the unit goes on just to bring in a little bit of novelty. Like, you know, hey, we always read this book, but today I have these all-in-one type of sheets for us to read. And sometimes the simplest changes can be fun for a kid. Um, and even if it's lowering your prep time, that's amazing too. So again, just kind of showing you how everything can go back in this fold or gallery baggie obviously you don't have to go with a gallon baggie but that's probably the most simple I just kind of restock it again the besides the decodables everything here is good for one month or 50 days excuse me 50 instructional days so longer than a month and then the only thing else you would be required to still prep a little bit on would be the decodables knowing that there are actually 12 different versions of decodables and keeping in mind that you also have that digital version of decodables that you could use as well for students if you didn't want to use any paper that's it you got an entire guide to phonics and beyond small group ready to go this is what you need to teach small groups with guide to phonics and beyond now teachers are like well what about all of the other things in the unit here's what i always say get your feet wet get going with these plans right here all you need is right here in this little baggie you're getting comfortable with it. The students are getting comfortable with it. Let's say you get halfway through the unit and you're like, you know, we're really good with this. We're getting good on our timing. We're getting it all in 12 and 15 minutes. I want to add a little bit fun. Maybe hop over to my freebies and you're like, oh, I love it how, uh, you know, you have the freebies that use the poppets. My students love those. Great. Print off a, ca a card set that you can use with poppets. Start using those. And then you think like, hey, I'm using a few freebies. I want something else. Then you can go back into the guide to phonics and beyond curriculum and say like, oh, hey, vow sticks. That was cool. I'm going to print some of those or drill mats. Those are fun. I'm going to start using drill mats at the beginning of group time. There are so many options that you can choose between my freebies, my other packets, my VIPs, all of that. But I don't want you to get so overwhelmed that you just close the door, lock it tight. And, and keep it closed. I don't want you to do that. So this is a very, very simple way to get your feet wet, get going. Even if you only use these the entire school year, your students are good. They're going to make amazing progress. Everything beyond this is really just for flair, for extra, for novelty, for more engagement possibly. Of course, if you put this in front of a student, they're going to think that they've learned so much more and had so much more fun. This is the nuts and bolts. This is all you need to teach Guide to and Beyond in your small groups. Anything beyond that is above and beyond. So don't give yourself a hard time if this is all you're using. Um, that's more than okay. 